Pleasure Project. You will most likely be asked, what process did you use to develop your system? Did you use Waterfall? Did you use Scrum? Did you use Agile? Did you use Extreme Programming? Which one of the concepts did you use? Why did you use that concept? So let's maybe start with the process itself. What process are you going to use to develop the system? And why? Who wants to take it? Right now, there's no real right or wrong answer. Your mod comes from the fact that you can motivate your judgment. You can motivate your consideration or your suggestion. It's not about whether you have the perfect suggestion. It's about whether you can motivate what your suggestion, which suggestion is. Can you see why it will work or why it won't work? I'd say the duration process because there's already a system developed. We're just adding more features or fixing features that are broken. All right. Um, so in this case, yeah. it has all done what we did last week. You want to develop the system. But there's already a mobile app developed for the system. The person who specializes in AI, it says they built the mobile app that works with the system. No, no, they did your project. Uh, Not for this project. So, in order to implement this app system, the University of Johannesburg has decided to give recent graduates the opportunity to pick up some work experience and that's the end of this system. Okay. Right. The person you're referring to is, I think it's Diana. Yeah, they are a uh, The person, something with the scene, that did the mobile app in the third year project. Yeah, in third year she was responsible for creating the amazing mobile app portion of the project. Right. right. But using an iterative way of looking at things, so doing it step by step, incrementing your, your, your prototypes, which would be an agile method. But which one would you use? So let's first talk about your team dynamic. Are you going to have all, how many of this? Five people? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six people. Are you going to have all six people working together at the same time? Why not? Each person has their own specialty, right? So each person will have a dedicated part of the system that will be their focus, right? So the idea would be to split up everybody and have them work on their part. Yes? But they still have to communicate, right? As a team, you might be working individually on your part, but you still have to communicate in order to know what you're developing. Otherwise, the system is not going to really great properly. So first of all, you need to look at what you're designing. You need to know what you're designing in order to know what you're going to provide. In this case, SAP system, document repository, we have a person that is experienced with something like that. So you're going to consult with your team and you'll maybe take badly as someone to give more advice and value because he's already developed a system similar to this. A system that requires, I think it's in integrity. Document repository system with integrity features built on a blockchain. So his influence on a project like this is important because has prior experience, which is good. So you'll take the team, you'll sit them down, and you'll ask them, okay, how are we supposed to approach this? You've got someone that can guide you on the ins and outs of what a system like this means. You've got someone that can explain how the web services will work. What type of a web service structure do you need? You've got two people considered very good with algorithms. You've got one person that's considered very good with UX, that can do design work. You've got one person that is very good with mobile, that can focus on doing a mobile platform for this. So very quickly you can see, each one of these people will be able to advise you on that part of the system. So their feedback is important. You listening to their feedback is important. But who makes the ultimate decision at the end of the day? The team leader. Right? In this situation, the team lead makes the decision. In your situations, you make the decision as a whole. 
You might have a team leader that does a general fund of fees, but he doesn't dictate what each person does. I'm assuming you're most of you. Right? Yes, no. Okay. So, in this situation, when you split these people up, because each one of them are considered an eight, or an expert in their own field, who's going to take the lead? Not the team, who's going to take the lead for the project? When you're not there, who's going to take over? <laughs> But you've got the person from Stanford, which DJ is like, <laughs> you've got the, the best email, which everybody's like, <laughs> you've got the, the couple, well, you just like their couple, you said no, apparently. And then you've got, yeah, that's all. Each one of them will be fighting for that spot. <laughs> No, Barrett is not the one that's the anti-social anti idea. Um, that is Emerson, the yeah, API. Yeah. Yeah. Just because they're anti-social doesn't mean they're not good leaders, by the way. Yeah, I'm just saying, right? Why is he important to go off scene? Because why is he the person to blow off the seat? No, I'm saying because he's not in the social status of being the only one who makes this decision. Emerson is the anti social. Yes, he is. He's the one who's taking the thing to do something else. I'm confused. No, no, you see, I don't care if he was social. Ah, okay. So you don't need to know what's going on. Right. So he's going to take me. I think Sierra, Kira, something with a C. Something with a C, yeah. I'm not sure if I got the name right, but the one who developed that document, a similar system before, is obviously she has the most experience. That, E. Hmm? Well, we're assuming E. They said E. She. That E. Uh, yeah. No, not him, the. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, would it not be Diana? Because she's currently learning how to manage that other team, like IT team management or other type of management. Then would she not be the most qualified to then take over from the Process team? Process wise, yes. Right, let me ask this in a different way. Each one of these expertises. Um, the API being the algorithms, the UX design, the, what's the other one? Um, the mobile, the AI. Are they all developed at the same time? What is generally developed? <laughs> some say API, some say algorithm. The UI, UX UI, the design of the system, right? Where do you implement UX? I know you guys haven't formally been introduced to UX before, user experience. Where do you develop the user experience? Can you implement user experience after the fact? No, it's built into your system, right? So where do you start with UX? From the beginning. So if you think about it, if you break up this project in terms of the process of the development of the project, you'll need a design first. Who's going to be important for the design aspect of your system? Bathy and the UX person, right? Because they have the most knowledge. Everybody else will still have an influence or an input, but they have the most knowledge for that stage. When it comes to implementation, we have our design. We're now starting to develop 
what we need to do. Let's say our pseudo code is empty. This would be important that they sleep here. The number cruncher, the algorithm person, and the API thing, right? Because that's the next stage. That's when their knowledge becomes integral or important for the system because they now have the better experience in terms of what happens in these specific areas. When it comes to implementation, now we're developing the system. Who then takes the lead? The person studying project management. Because they are trained to look at the risks, they are trained to identify problem areas, looking at team dynamics. So during the implementation, when everybody split up, that person will generally look at the communication between them and make sure that it's still managed as communication. And then when it comes to the actual presentation, who's that? <laughs> The UX, the UX person, which is the major pain. <laughs> no, yeah. Why? Because it probably has the experience or the personality to present. But as you can see, depending on where you are in the stages of the system, someone else kind of needs to take the lead. Either based on experience or based on knowledge. So there's not one person that is individually more important than the others, except for you as the team lead. But that's only in your absence, by the way. You should be there the entire time taking control. But you need to understand everybody's strengths and weaknesses. Someone like Emerson will keep on working without your Difference of battering or poking or prodding or trying to socialize. But in order to get feedback, you most likely will have to prod. How far are you? What's going on? Someone like Freddy will most likely be in your office all the time telling you how amazing everything is. Making everything pink, apparently. <laughs> Someone like a leader needs an ego check most likely. Not meaning that in a bad way, but if you're being puffed up by an external factor like the university that's saying this is a bonus for this team, purely because of where she studied or where he studied or where the person studied. That gives you a self, it gives you a sense of self importance sometimes. So you need an ego check. You need to make sure that that person doesn't take control. What is the worst case scenario for a team? Have you ever had the experience, uh, the expression, too many chefs in the kitchen? This team is both with that dynamic. There are too many chefs in this kitchen. Because each one of these persons are, or each one of these people are regarded as an expert or a very good candidate in their field. They're chosen for their expertise and therefore they're going to try and overtake that part of the system. You need to keep your egos in check. What do you want to avoid in a team dynamic? Hostility, breakdown of communication, friendly uh, work environments. So when you're talking about people, you need to keep all of that in mind. When you're talking about the process, you need to keep in mind what it is you're actually trying to develop. What are the characteristics? What's your time frame? Do you need feedback from your client? Do they want incremental deliverables? Now, in this case, you're not given enough information about the process itself, so you will have to make an assumption. In your test, you'll most likely be given a scenario that will tell you you've got so much time, you've got so much pressure, you'll be given a few time frames or a few guidelines on what the process should be. You're choosing what your process is. The product is the easiest part of everything. 
the product is what you're building. There's, there's no ifs, there's no buts, you know exactly what you're building. So when you discuss the product, you just simply discuss what is required of that product. Not in a very detailed manner, you can go high level or um, an, an overview, because you will have a number of marks that you have to allocate. You want to make sure that you don't over explain things. You can write <coughs> an entire book up and just put two marks on it, depending on what the relevance is for that text. So be careful for giving too much information as well. It's important that you give enough information. Too much is good, too little is bad, but finding that balance is difficult. Generally, it's one mark per fact, but from the papers I've seen, often you don't know which, which, of, which of your concepts are facts and which of your concepts are considerations. Your motivation for a consideration is the fact that you're looking for. That is the academic um, support you need for what you're trying to suggest. We need to do Agile. That's not going to get a mark. The reason for why you need to do Agile, that's going to get a mark. If you're doing waterfall, it might be wrong, it might be right. Your motivation will determine that. Even though waterfall is kind of aging and slowly dying, it's still a very valid concept. It's just very expensive, that's all. Then the project, which encompasses everything of the project itself. Not just the people, not just the product, but the combination of everything, the technologies. Things that can influence the project. You need to be aware of what the risks are. You'll, later on this semester, you'll do a risk analysis where you start looking at what can you control, what can't you control? What do you plan for and what do you simply just leave? There are things that you can control or predict. There are things that you can't. You don't have infinite budgets. You can't plan for everything, unfortunately. And even, even if you had an infinite budget, it's still stupid to plan for everything. Because you're simply just wasting the resource. Even if that resource is infinite. And you are defined by the amount of money you have and the amount of time you have. And most of the times those two go hand in hand. And those two will be the core of most of your decisions. It's important to know. Right. So, who thinks this project will succeed with these people? Hands up if you think this project will succeed with these people. Well. No, there's a trick, there's a, there's a trick question here. Who thinks this project will succeed with these people? Hands up. Up on. Right. So the rest of you have no confidence in yourself. Because you're the team lead. <laughs> I told you it's a trick question. It's not the people, it's the person that needs the people. You can make any team dynamic work if you can control them. In order to control them, you need to understand them. Right. You guys get very confused right now. Good. It means you can think about it. Okay. We're near the end. I wasn't given a process for you to do. Oh, we can talk about the bonus consideration. <laughs> I forgot about that one. You as team lead used to take one of these people. And it did not end well. Does that change the team dynamic? No. Okay, let's check. Hands up if you say yes, it changes the team dynamic. Hands up if you say no, it doesn't change the team dynamic. You think you get the break? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a silly exercise because it depends on a lot of more information that is required. But these are the types of questions you can get from your semester. 
we'll give a, give a scenario, you'll be given the background of the people. If you're giving it, give it information like you were given here, that information is important in order to use or explain something. Profit is not going to be something that is not going to be used. If she told you it's regarded as something important, there's a reason for that. If she told you the person is driving a flaming pink car, there's a very silly reason for that. sounds silly. I can tell you from experience and I've been viewing projects for the better half of a decade now. Teams generally do badly at alphas because they don't explain the problem sufficiently. One thing you need to understand, every promise you make in your presentation is noted by the external. If you're going to tell them you're solving more hundreds, they're going to look for out the system, where are you solving your home? So be careful for the claims you make during your presentation. Make sure that your presentation is focused. That you have a laser point focus at what your problem is. That you have in your system a one-to-one -one relationship with whatever the problem is. Here is a direct solution for what I've identified as a problem. If it helps you, break it down into bullet point fashion. But make sure that you understand what your problem is, because if you don't understand your problem, the external will definitely not understand it. And on that note, a presentation is not a text wall like this. A presentation is bullet point fashion, you don't have to have bullet points. But a presentation is generally just talking points. It's a reference or a guide to what you're going to talk about. The general rule of thumb is, if I'm not mistaken, is 7 by 7 or 5 by 7. No more than 7 bullet points, no more than 7 words per sentence per bullet point. Because the moment you have too much on the slide, the external or your mentor reads what's on the slide instead of listening to you. 
And the moment they see more information on your site than what you're providing, you've lost their attention entirely. Which, you might talk about something important, but they will miss it. Now, I'm telling you this because I see it every single year. Some of you hear it from your mentors, some of you hear it from your lecturers, but yet you still ignore it. And some of you are going to hear all of this from your externals as well. Don't leave your alpha presentation preparation for the day before. You've already failed at your presentation. Okay. My recommendation, so you'll see there is a deployment section in your presentation. Deploy your systems locally. Deploy it onto your device. So when you walk into your presentation, you don't have an IDE running in the background. You're not running it from the IDE. It's deployed. It's deployed on your system. Alpha, betas, and finals. Why do I say that? Because you can't control what the host company does. And believe me, you've seen this in the past. Companies that have, teams that have hosted their stuff with Azure, that used to be on some of the data centers, and on the day of their presentation, the entire data center, center went down. That 1%, less than 1% downtime that they claim happened on their presentation for those two hours. Believe me, you're going to have that bad luck if you host externally. So take my advice, deploy everything you have in your local environment because you have direct control about that. <coughs> right. You want to uh, presenting in the honors lab or the master's lab, going to be between the two. It uses student Wi-Fi. Make sure your system plays well with student Wi-Fi because some of the ports are blocked. Don't test it out before your presentation so if you know what works and what does not work. What works at your home is not necessarily going to work in the lab. Right. You will be given time, however, to go and test out the Wi-Fi and see if your systems connect, but that will be discussed with you most likely next week. Right. Okay, everyone. I will see you maybe next week.